Today, I get to have a conversation with Drew Camp, the founder of the Epic Dad Company. Drew is going to share how complacency kills. He's going to share with you how the same complacency that he saw on the battlefield when he was in the military is similar to the complacency he sees with men and in their families, complacency in their relationships with their kids and with their wife. And Drew doesn't want that to happen to you. In this episode, he's going to give you steps that you can take right now to build your identity and your value so that you can live a life that is in alignment with your purpose, a life of sovereignty where no one else calls the shots but you. And I'm going to tell you, Drew shares his identity statement in this episode. And this episode is worth listening to just to hear that, replay it, and model it in your own life. Really excited about this conversation and for you to meet Drew Camp on this episode of the Dad's Making a Difference podcast. Drew, welcome to the Dad's Making a Difference podcast, brother. It's good to see you today. Cam, thanks for having me on, man. I'm super, uh, super excited to be here. Love what you're doing. I appreciate that. I am excited for this conversation because I've been following your stuff online for a while, the Epic Dad Company, and just kind of following your story. And after our initial conversation a couple of weeks back to set this up, I was like really looking forward to this so much so that I shared with you and I'll share to the guys listening to this. I may have left work a little early to do this today. You know, so I was like, I'm up, I'm ready to go. Let's have this conversation. Let's get it started. And so, Drew, why don't you tell us and start by telling the guys who are listening to this and wives who are listening for their husbands and pass it along a little bit about yourself. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully I can live up uh, to, to that intro, right? Of you taking some time off work to have our our conversation. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Drew Camp. So I, I run a company called The Epic Dad Company or just Tedco uh, for short. Um, and really our, our mission with the company is to change the culture. Uh, by creating more epic dads. So like, you know, I wholeheartedly believe and our our company believes that 90 over 90% of the problems that we we face today could be solved if dads would step up and start leading the way that they're supposed to. Um and so that that's like that's our broad mission, right? Um and, and how do we help with that? So we help in a number of different ways. So at, at our core, we are a supplement company. Um so so we create 100 percent natural uh, 100% transparent supplements for dads that want to go on that journey to become better fathers. And so, you know, if they raise their hand and say, like, I'm ready to start becoming the leader that I know I should be, like, we want to be there to help them along that journey with, with supplementation. Um, and so that that's kind of who we are, man. Um, been running the company for a couple of years now. And and we've, you know, we've seen significant growth um, this year for sure. Um, and hoping, you know, next year can can be a big year for us too. And, and it's just been awesome to see one that our message is resonating with so many dads and 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 not just dads right but moms too um <laughs> you know yeah. and, uh, so that's been awesome and it's been really awesome to see like the impact we've made already you know that's incredible you know this i'm sure you didn't just start this company thinking oh one day this is a good idea maybe i'll just do that you know came across something randomly um what about you and your journey as a father inspired you to start this yeah. Uh, so great question. Um, it's really a number, a number of factors, uh, right. And I'll, I'll kind of start like way back before I became a dad, um, you know, was, so I was in the military, right. Um, out, out of college. So I, I uh, played college baseball and then got married, joined the military, um, you know, did four years active duty, uh, here in the States as an infantryman. Um, and you know, I, I kind of tell this story, right. Of like, in so, so I went on deployment in Afghanistan, um, it was a combat deployment. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by threats like all the time, right? Um, you know, it could be guys shooting at us. It could be, you know, us potentially stepping on IEDs. Um, and the the particular area that we were at in Afghanistan was just littered with dismounted IEDs. Um, and so we had to kind of adjust our our tactics and procedures, you know, as a unit uh, to walk with a minesweeper, right? Um, we had to walk in a single file line and kind of put chalk down on the ground of like, Hey, don't step on the other side of that line. Cause like you might get blown up. Mm. Right. And so like that environment is very austere. Um, but what happens over time is you get complacent, you know? Um, and you, you start to, you know, not see the threats that are coming your way. You, you start to ignore, you know, potential, uh, things that could be landmines. Right. 
Um, and you know, and that's obviously to your detriment, like things, bad things can happen, right. If you get complacent. Um, and so, you know, after the military, I, I transitioned out, um, just went to work in corporate America and, uh, really had a tough time with my transition. Um, as a lot of service members do about finding like what's next, right? Like I, I wrap my identity around, you know, I'm, I'm you know, a soldier and really don't, you know, know what my purpose is. Um, but for me, Cam, that like 100% of that changed. Like the second I had my first daughter was just like, cool. Like, this is why I'm here. Uh, you know, it's just like 100% 180 shift, um, you know, around like what my purpose is, is like, I need to, you know, support this child and, and, you know, bring her up the right way, teach the right values, make sure she's ready to go conquer the world. Um, and so since then I've had another daughter, and I've had a son, so we've got three kids now. Um, and the reason I told that story about you know my military service in Afghanistan was, you know, I, I started to find myself going down the same route, right? Like and getting complacent. Um, and you know, although you know the, the landmines that were around me like wouldn't kill me, right? Like I'm not going to step on it and die. Um, still, though, that like I could see there are landmines all around me that I'm getting complacent about, right? Like I'm not being disciplined. I'm not being, you know, the leader of my home that I should be. Um, I've got these vices, you know, like alcohol, like porn, um, you know, and I'm just not leading the way that I should. Um, and so like all of that really, you know, set up this, this concept and this idea around the Epic Dad Company. It was like, when you look around at our culture and you look at all the problems we have, right? If it's, you know, politically, uh, you know, think about homelessness, think about, you know, uh, criminality going up and you look at the common thread it really goes back to fatherhood, right? Like we can try to put band-aids, you know, solutions all over it, like a policy. But, you know, when you really go to the core of the issue, it comes back to, we have way too many fatherless homes mm -hmm. and the homes where the fathers are there, they're not being intentional. They're not being present. And so that, that like sparked the concept um, of the Epic Dad Company. Um, and then from there, man, it was, uh, we can go into if you want to, but it's been, it's been a two year journey, um, you know, of, of really running a business and figuring all, out all that stuff too. We'll go there for sure. Cause, <laughs> cause I can relate to that. You mentioned fa fatherlessness and this is a growing issue all around North America. I'm in Canada, you're in the United States. And, but I know I sit across from broken youth every single day, broken mm -hmm. youth. Yeah. I can imagine from, being in the education system. Yeah. Right. And come from broken homes. And I'm going to tell you, our, the school in which I work is about 1,300 students. And we have a probably roughly around 200 who are like, they're on our radar. Hey, we would c consider them at risk. I would say 95%, I'm not exaggerating, 95% of those students who are at risk do not have a positive male role model in their yep. life mm -hmm. or a father yep. in their life. And that doesn't mean that he's not there. It mm -hmm. means that he's not intentional. He's not present. And he's not, let's be honest, he's not fulfilling his role of what he's called to be as a dad. And I mm -hmm. love that when your daughter was born, you're like, boom, this is who I am. Yeah, man. That's I mean, just in, instant shift. Yeah. Instant shift, you know, of like searching for that purpose. Right. And like, yeah. you know, like I said, a lot of transitioning service members go through the same thing I went through is because you, you yeah. wrap your identity around it. Right. Um, and you're kind of looking for that next thing. And for me, man, it just, like I said, it was just an instantaneous shift, like in the delivery room of like, yeah. Cool. I know what I was put on this earth to do, you know? Yeah. I uh I see some commonalities in, in your story, some themes that just as you were talking, I'm writing down here. And it's not that I'm not paying attention. I'm just like, wow, that's good. You played baseball. You yep. come from a sporting background. I can relate to that. College sports where you're part of a team and it's part of your identity and you belong to a group and, and a purpose greater than yourself. You didn't join the military. You're part of a team, part of a group. You have responsibilities, something greater than yourself. And was it such that before you were dad in that window between like knowing your true purpose, was there a sense of like, I'm not part of something greater than myself right now? Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something so many guys struggle with, right? Um, you know, is, is at the end of the day, like we're put on this planet to serve others, you know? Um, and if, if we're, you know, being self-serving and, and, you know, being individuals and lone wolves, uh, we're, we're always going to have kind of that feeling of like, you know, depression, anxiety, like there's something more for me. Right. And so, um, for me, it just so happened that like, Hey, my next team, right. Is dads. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be, you know, anything, right. But, but I think that it's so important that you, 
look outward um, and try to you know be in service of others is like really where fulfillment is going to come. Yeah, I love it. That's why I have. That's why I'm so excited to have guys like you on here. And guys, I will get questioned. I'm not going to lie to you, Drew. People will question me on like why I have guys like uh, you and Kurt Storing and Larry and John from on here when we're all like aiming to serve other men and maybe we have businesses that are so similar. And you and I had this conversation a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Like, we can never serve the number of men that need to be served by ourselves. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and that's why I love having you on. And so I want to shift a little bit because uh, you alluded to this. Uh, I have my own story. Guys listening to this are tired of my story. I wanted to share your story of what it was like for you to decide, hey, corporate America is not for me. My purpose is to be a dad. But wait a second. I'm seeing there's a bigger need here. I'm going to slowly start to make this shift or really rapidly make this shift. What has that look like for you and your family? Uh, yeah, man. So, I mean, just kind of like my entrepreneurial journey um, has, has taken a long time and it's evolved uh, over several years. Um, so like you mentioned, right? Like getting out of the military, I kind of had, I had that purpose, that identity. Um, and then, you know, my upbringing, uh, my, I had a great upbringing. My parents are still together. They've been married, you know, 40 years now, um, you know, had, had a great, great relationship with my father. Um, but one thing that, that I wish would have happened for me um, was to have kind of my, my um, understanding of like what's possible expanded. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me, the, the route was always, hey, and I'm sure a lot of listeners as well has been, hey, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, go work for a great company go build your 401k, yeah. you know, and that's just what it is, right? Like, that's your yeah. path. Yeah. Done. yeah. Um, and I, I got about like two years into corporate America and I was like, I was like, bump this dude. Like this is, I don't want this, you know? Um, and, and I've always felt that I've always felt that I've been like, you know, a uh, 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 square peg trying to go into a circle hole, like in that environment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and just that like, I just don't belong here. Um, and so I, I kind of started my path on entrepreneurship um, while I was still at work. Um, and and that for me, that looked like just a ton of personal development, um, you know, a ton of podcasts, a ton of research, uh, trying to figure out like what's out there, like what can I actually do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, that was probably for about two years <laughs> before I took any type of action, um, just learning, right? Um, and then from there, I started my first company, um, which was... Uh, company before this that that was a another physical product brand um, where we sold hiking gear um, and so explored that that space and and kind of just learn trial by error of like hey this is how you talk to manufacturers you know this is how you develop product this is kind of how you build a brand and kind of had to learn everything from scratch right and just trial and error um you know and, and that company was was good uh unfortunately covid played a huge role in that because we were sourcing from China. Um, totally wrecked our supply chain, our cash flow operations, et cetera. Um, so I, I kind of use that as like my learning business, right? Um, like that's where I learned all my mistakes. Um, and then from there, I kind of pivoted to, to the Epic Dad Company. But for me, that journey has really been like this calling of like, I just, I'm not meant to go down this traditional route. Um, I'm just not. Um, and if I, if I do, I know I'm going to be miserable, right? Um, yeah. and not, not just, I'm not, called to this because of like financial possibilities. Like, yes, that's, that's one thing. Right. But ultimately for me, it's like this idea of sovereignty, right. Is I don't want to be dependent upon, upon anything. Um, you know, I want to have the ability to go out and make my own income. Uh, I don't want to be beholden to decisions that maybe I'm not comfortable of, uh, because, you know, people have that control over me, right. Whether it's an employer, whether it's the government or anything, like I want to have sovereignty over my life. So that I can lead my family in the direction that I think is best. Um, and for me, that may not be the same for everyone, but for me, that all comes down to entrepreneurship. Hmm. Love it. I'm I'm gonna pause there for a moment and come back to this idea of sovereignty. Like someone else isn't calling the shots, they're calling your own shots, right? Mm-hmm. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and talk about our community of DMD brothers in the DMD mastermind. We are men who help each other to stay focused and intentional in our pursuits of personal, professional, physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual growth. 
We are a community of men who bring courage, wisdom, and transparency to unfiltered conversations that challenge us to be more impactful men, to be dads making a difference. We do this through our online and in-person events where men come together to speak into each other's lives and then turn around and do the deep work to create change in their families, in their businesses, and in the community around them. If you are wondering if this community might be right for you, you can find more information on the DMD Mastermind, and you can also book a call directly with me at dmdmastermind.com. Now, let's get back to our show. What would you say is your filter as a dad, husband, professional? Like, what is the filter? I'm always curious about this. What is the filter that you use? Top three things in your filter, five things like that you use to put every decision through to say, yeah, this is a good idea or a bad idea. Like that this is, I'm gonna can I I'll give you one. Like I'm like sovereignty, boom. Like I'm in yeah. control of my own destiny here. But what are some other things in your personal filter that you would encourage men listening to this maybe to add to their filter if they're building them? Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna be typing here in the background a little bit because I want to pull this up and read it word for word. Yeah. Um right. so let me uh I'll, I'll, I'll find it as we go along. Um, but the, for, for me specifically, and for our kind of community that we're building as the Epic dad community, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have this framework, um, that, that we walk people through and really what filters our decisions is going to be that first pillar in our framework, which is your identity and your values. And so I think you have to have a very clear understanding of who you are at your core right? Like what you believe in, what, what makes you, and then also what is your value system? Hmm. Um, and you need to reflect on that. You need to create that. And then you need to reinforce that on a daily basis, because that ultimately is going to be your filter through which you make decisions. And so like, for me, I've got my identity, um, a statement, which we call it. Um, I've got that memorized. So I, I say that out loud every single morning. Um, and then I try to connect with my value system on a weekly basis, just to judge, Hey, how did I do this week based off of what I think is important to me? Um, and just kind of take a, take stock, right? Of like, am I living in alignment with those values? Um, and so my identity statement, I'll just, I'll just say it out loud. So my identity is I'm Drew Camp. I'm a chosen child of God. Um, I, uh, I have a, a God-given purpose that no man uh, or being can ever take away. Uh, I am the son of Andy and Cheryl Camp, my greatest teachers. I am the husband to Jessica Megan Camp, my rock, my love, always and forever. I am the father to Porter, Arden, and Murphy Camp, my shining lights and flaming arrows. I am a leader, a warrior, a lion, and a servant. Um, I accept responsibility. I reject passivity, and I lead courageously. Uh, I will not waste my time. I am Drew Camp. So like, that's my identity. That is like my what God. I believe in. Most and so what I do is I, can, I try to connect with that every single morning, right? And make sure that my actions that I'm taking are in alignment with that. And then additionally, you have your identity. You also have your value set, which I think is so, so important. And so this is ultimately what we're going to filter those decisions through is if I know what I value, I know I want to live in alignment with those values is, hey, is this decision I'm about to make, right? This, this fork in the road that I'm about to take is like, which one aligns with my values, right? And nine times out of 10, it's going to be the harder decision. <laughs> um, and that's just the way it is if you want to live in alignment. Um, and so what we do is we craft our personal values, but then what's really um, powerful is we craft our family values as well. And so, you know, you have these values for, for yourself that you connect with, but then you have your family values that you can reinforce, you know, with your family um, and, and try to come up with opportunities to, to reinforce those, you know, on a daily, weekly basis with them to really craft like your identity for your family as well. So I think identity and values are, are huge. Huge. And come right back to what you were saying before about purpose and mm -hmm. finding purpose uh, without identity, without values, there is no purpose. Right. Because you're going to be always wandering, wandering with an A and wondering with an O who you are, what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're jumping from one thing to another and you'll never feel fulfilled and you'll never feel that you're fulfilling a purpose if you don't know your identity and your values. Mm -hmm. And your, your statement is powerful. And I hope the guys, if you're listening to this right now, you're going to hit that little back half circle on your, eye, on your iPod or wherever you listen to old school. And you're going to go back and you're going to re-listen to that. And I challenge you to create a statement like Drew created for himself. It's such a powerful practice. Man, thank you for sharing that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It, it's something that, uh, um, 
you know, really changed my perspective on it. Right. Um, it, you know, it, for a number of different reasons, like, like before I, uh, became a father and, and even after I became a father and, you know, started going through and seeing that I had landmines in my life, right. I wasn't fulfilling my potential. Um, you know, there's this sense of like anxiety, right. There's this sense of, of depression, um, mm-hmm. this sense of this, you know, voice in your head, uh, for, for lack of a better word. Right. And I think that is just a, a clear sign that like, you're not living in alignment, right. With, with, with who you're supposed to be and what you're capable of. Um, and so for me, I have to make sure that the activities that I'm doing on a daily basis are in alignment with that. And like, not saying I'm, I'm perfect. I make mistakes all the time, like every day, you know? Um, but I know that if I have a clear identity and I'm striving towards that and I have a purpose and I'm actively working towards it, like that anxiety, depression, like it, it just floats away, man. Would you consider that anxiety and depression are those the landmines that you refer to? Like you became a you became a dad, uh, maybe you lost some intentionality, some focus, and you encountered landmines across your journey that helped you kind of get to where you are now. But w- would those be anxiety, depression, or what are the landmines that kind of pop up when we're in a journey as a father? That- yeah, so I think the landmines that that can pop up are going to be lagging what we call lagging indicators, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, these are going to be these very tactical things that you are doing to try to fill a void yeah. because you have this anxiety, you have this depression and you're wondering like, you know, well, I'm not fulfilling my my purpose. And so you're going to fill that with, with something, right? And so those landmines, you know, could be things like drinking. They could be like laziness. You know, it could be um, things like porn addiction, um, you know, it, it could be anything really, right. That that's that negative energy that's taking up your life. That's filling that void. And so I say it's that lagging indicator because the leading indicator is like, you have this feeling right of that anxiety, that depression, and you're trying to fill that void. And so if we craft that identity, we craft that those value sets and we're striving towards that, you know, those things, those landmines, they, they get a lot easier to get rid of if, if that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. I love that you brought up leading and lagging indicators. Uh, the first time I ever came across that terminology, I was reading a book called How Will You Measure Your Life by Clay- uh, Clayton Christensen. Such a great book if you haven't read it. Um, but you mentioned drinking and pornography and these other things. And guys are listening to this. Oh, that's not me. I don't drink. I don't, I'm not into porn. I'm not doing this. Man, it could be doom scrolling. It could be mm-hmm. like just being absent from your kids. You're sitting on the, the kids are playing in the yard and you decide I'm just going to kind of sit and be here and veg out. And like you need relaxation time. I get it but you also want to be involved. It could be the six hours you spend on one afternoon watching sport and cheering on other grown men, you know, like it, it could be anything like that. So I appreciate you clarifying that and digging into that. You know, as you, you mentioned starting to serve other men, bring guys into a coaching program, you have this framework uh, that you work guys through. What, do guys need to know about what you do that is going to kind of push them in the next step, the next direction to help them hopefully connect with you, right? If they hear your story, they hear your thing and they're like, yeah, you know what? I've known Cam for a long time, but this Drew guy sounds really amazing. I want to learn more about him. Like what is the first step someone can do uh, to find that information out about you? Yeah. And, and, you know, to echo what you said earlier, Cam, right? Like there's a lot of people in this space and, and, I don't view that as like competition at all. Right. Um, because we all, we all have a similar mission on like, we want to serve dads. Um, and you know what we may be saying the exact same thing. Right. And some people would actually resonate to you and your message. And some people might naturally resonate to me and my message. And so we're all serving the same, the same mission, the same purpose. So I wanted to kind of echo, echo that statement right there first. So, um, you know, the first thing for us, right. Is, is we have a podcast. So, um, I started the Epic Dad Legacy podcast about two years ago. Um, and we're, I think we're about 80, 82, 83 episodes deep or so. Um, and that's something that I try to publish weekly at least on. Um, so that's a great starting point, right? Of just kind of see what we're about, um, see how we're pushing guys. Um, and then we've got a free community as well um, called the Epic Dad Crew um, that we actually, it was paid. We just opened it up for free because I was just yeah. like, you know what? Like, who cares? It's not, it's not about like making money off people. It's really like, I want you to get in and like see our message and, and start to make progress. So we just opened it up uh, for free. Cool. So if anybody wants to join that and kind of see what we're about, um, start, you know, going through, you know, our, our kind of six pillars on how to become an epic dad, like 100% you are free to join um, and, and hopefully start getting some value. 
Very cool. I always ask my guests one question. It's like the one question. Um, what is one area of growth that as a father or husband you're excited about diving into right now? Right now, it's my relationship uh, with my mm-hmm. wife uh, and and like 100%. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people will resonate with this, especially people that have young children um, is, you know, when probably about from like when your kid is born until they're two, it's like survival mode, man. It really is. Right. <laughs> and, is, yeah. uh, as much as we preach, like yeah. you should go have date nights every week. And, oh, you know, it's, it's like, bro, so hard to do, man, when you have young yeah. kids and like my, my older two are in sports now and like multiple sports. Right. So like every night it's something it's like softball practice, then basketball practice, then gymnastics. And, you know, and they're about to get into jujitsu. And so it's like, there's always something. And then also we have an 18 month old that's like, you know, crying all the time, change diapers and, you know, doctor's visit. So it just is, is pure chaos. I think when you have small children yes. and we, we get away from having that emotional connection with our spouse, you know, it just becomes like the, the roommate mentality, right. Of like, all right, we're just here to do a job and, you know, maybe we'll have a date every now and then. Um, but at the end of the day, like my relationship with her came before the kids. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's the most important relationship. Yeah. Um, and I actually tell my kids this all the time. i was be like, Hey, your mom's my number one baby. I was like, y'all are two, three, and four. I was like, she's number one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I need, I need to back that up with action. Right. Um, and so for me, now that we're kind of getting past that pure chaos, uh, stage of life, it, it's getting back to, you know, that emotional connection, uh, with my wife and making sure that, you know, I'm doing all the right things as a husband to support her, um, you know, on her journey as well. Um, and so that's something I'm really excited about diving into. I love it. It's such an important area. You've challenged me because this is an area that I'm working on right now. Like I find it really easy as a dad to get up. I've got two, my and Braylon. So mine's 11, Bray's nine. And he, he and her are so different. You know, I can get up in the morning. I get up super early. I do my thing and then I'll go wake them up. And it's so easy for me to like be excited about going downstairs and waking them up. And I have this little good morning song that I've sang to them since they were infants and they're like, dad, stop. But I will always do it by the way. Uh, (laughs) And, but it's so easy for me to do that and kind of take the time to be present and wake them up. But I don't do that to my wife. Yeah. And Mm. and like how, how easy, easy, simple, easy or two different things would it be to just turn over in our bed in the morning, cuddle with my wife, say good morning to her. And I love her. And then we both get on with our day. Instead, we mm-hmm. get to this point where it's just like, you said, it's like, all right, ready, go high five. Let's start the day. I'll yeah. see you later this evening. And we'll, we'll strategize on our calendar and do all the grocery updates, but there's no connection. Yeah. It's really easy to get distracted. And I appreciate you showing your vulnerability and answering that question because it's a challenge to the men listening to this and to myself to take the time to be present because that relationship is number one. Yeah. And, you know, like the, like w- within our company, our community, we kind of break our lives into these four separate pillars. Mm-hmm. So we, we break them into our body, our relationships, our mind, and our finances. It's kind of like the four buckets for us. Right. Yeah. And there's different seasons of life um, where you're going to be giving more attention to one of those pillars. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for, for me, um, you know, the, the past year or so has been, a lot around relationships with kids, right? And it's been a lot around finances with the business. Um, and so, you know, it's it's great, right? Like, like we want to give focus to make, you know, a larger impact in one area. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to have one of those pillars go way up and then the other pillar go down to zero, right? Right. It's like we want to maintain some semblance of balance across the pillars, even though we have to dive into one in a little bit more detail and more focus. Yep. And so for me, it's like, okay we're getting past this season, right. Of young children. Uh, and I know that I haven't been like the best husband, you know? Um, so right. now it's time to double down and say, okay, I'm going to add a lot more focus and intentionality to that relationship bucket with my spouse. And like, that may mean, you know, that I, I miss a workout here or there, you know, or something like that. Right. But, yeah. but that's my, my priority, you know, for this season. I love it. I love that idea of instead of like, well, guys will say work-life balance, right? That's something. Yeah. That's such, that's here. such BS, man. Yeah, There's no is. balance. There is no balance, but what you're sh- saying is something that we share as well. And we have a quadrant system, the similar to your, okay, yeah. you, you cannot abandon one of the quadrants. You can't mm-hmm. leave it completely, but there's this counterbalance that takes place because at different times in your life, 
you need to prioritize different things and you need to be okay with that. You know, there, you can't be guilt associated with that, but there needs to be a plan and intentionality to why you're doing so. So yeah. thanks for sharing. No, That's exactly. Like, 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 you know, so just kind of inside baseball for your listeners is, is this has been a side hustle for me for the past two years. Um, you know, so like I'm still working full time. Yep. Um, I'm still in the national guard, um, you know, and trying to do this as well. And so like, there's a lot of things, you know, on my plate. Um, but in, in January, I'll be going full time in the business, which is super exciting. Um, Congrats. but thank you. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a journey for sure. Yeah. Um, Congrats on the oncoming chaos. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, like I've had the discussion with my wife and, and right. we'll continue to have that discussion of like, hey, in January, I was like, my my business pillar is going to go way up, right? right. Um, and so, you know, like I'm going to work harder than you've ever seen me work. Like, and that means that there's gonna be a lot of hours sitting in my office or going and visiting customers and things like that, right? And like, we need to be okay with that. And we need to set certain expectations around what that's going to look like and what a time frame is going to look like for that. Because it's not just going to be, I'm going to be go, 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 go for the next year. It's like, no, I'll be, I'll be go, go, go for, you know, the first quarter for the first 90 days, like super, super intense. Right. And that means that I might miss a soft, you know, a softball game or practice every now and then. Um, and we have to kind of make that trade off, uh, in advance and set those expectations in advance. So we don't come into conflict when it's like, well, no, I, you know, I've got to work. It's like, no, we've already had that discussion. You know, yeah. we understand what, what's coming down the pike. Man. We could just keep going on because what you just said is important too. And I think there's just a little piece in there that I don't want men to overlook. You said you might have to miss a softball practice or two. You know what? We are we feel like sometimes guilt if we're not there all the time. And mm -hmm. I can tell you something, sitting across from youth in an educational setting for the last 17 years, you don't need to be there all the time. And it's okay to give your permission, give permission to yourself and to your kids that they can venture out and do some things when you're not there and do that, that on their own. Uh, I think that's an important part of the growth process, but I love that you just said that we have a plan though, and it's expected mm -hmm. and it's intentional and it's clear and we communicate. It's not just, Oh, Hey babe, by the way, I'm not going to be there tonight. That's not what it is. It's, we have a plan. It's set out. There's purpose to it. I keep coming back to this purpose because, man, you are you are a man full of purpose right now, and you're firing me up. I love it. Uh, there's there's purpose to everything you're doing. You're not just throwing stuff to the wind and letting it go. So, man, I'm excited for you. I cannot wait to hear how January kicks off and how 2024 kicks off. Um, Drew, we might have to have you back after January yeah. to have a conversation. But in the meantime, you've got the podcast. You've got the Epic Dad Crew. You've got uh, Tedco. You got the supplements. So, where can people find you, find information, or connect with you if they want to reach out? Yeah, Instagram is is the best place. Um, it's where you know we're most active. And I say we, it's it's me. So if, if yeah. you shoot a DM and there's an answer, it's not like my team. It's me talking to yeah. you. Um, and and I'll, I'll answer every single DM. It may be a little delay, but I'll I'll get back to you on it. Um, just at the Epic Dad Co on Instagram is kind of our hub, you know? And so we, we've got links out to, to all those resources, um, you know, free trainings, free programming, our free community, our podcast, um, you know, anything that you would want as far as the Epic Dad Company would, would be there. Amazing. Drew, I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time away from your family to do this today. And I wish you all the best as you kick this off in January. Thank you, Cam. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. 